Hey, what's up everybody, it's me Jordan, and I'm back with another drawing video. This time I'm drawing Severus Snape from Harry Potter, and this drawing was a tribute I decided to make for Alan Rickman, who is the actor for Severus Snape who recently passed away. For anyone who's confused, I decided to make two videos for this drawing. The first one, which is already out, is my tribute video, which has some of the scenes from the movie kind of superimposed in the background and it's got some of the like voice acting and stuff in the background as well. It's not narrated so I thought it was just a really cool kind of send-off and just something that I decided to make and it took a lot of time and it's by far got the most editing out of all my videos that I've done so far. So if you haven't seen that one yet please check it out. Lots of effort went into that and I think it turned out pretty cool. So I don't want this video being too sombre. The other video is my send-off. This one is just kind of there because I thought some people might actually enjoy me talking a little bit about the process because it's a bit different to my regular drawings, my anime style stuff. I like doing some realistic occasionally, so I thought this would be kind of a cool chance to do a realistic drawing and talk a little bit about it. The other video, it's a little bit hard to see what I'm doing because like I said before, there's some scenes from the movie kind of playing in the background a little bit. So I thought that this video would be helpful to some people because you can kind of see more clearly what I'm doing. Originally I wasn't gonna do it, I just thought I'd leave it at the other one, but I thought it'd be kind of cool to just do a bonus video for you guys and it might be helpful to some of you as well. I still wanted this drawing to be a little bit sketchy. I didn't want it being completely photorealistic or anything like that. I like these portraits to have a lot of texture and still look like drawings. So they'll look realistic, but at the same time you can still tell it's a drawing because I think that gives it some character. I don't want it just looking like a photograph. I want you to be able to see the pencil strokes and all the little details, the sketchiness of it. And I think that gives it a really cool look. But it just comes down to personal preference, what you want to do, obviously. So the pencils that I'm using are Mars Lumograph pencils, I think they are. So I used HB, 2B, 4B, 7B, and 8B, I think. And I just kind of alternated between them, building up the tones, having some really light colours, and then going all the way through to the really darkness of the 8B pencil. And I've said this before, but my main goal to get these portraits looking good is to have a really high contrast between the light colours and then the really dark colours. So you want a really good variety. When you're just doing a grey lead drawing, you really need a high contrast. Otherwise, it's just going to look boring and it'll just look like a flat grey drawing. So make sure you get some really dark blacks and then also have some light highlights as well. Another little thing that you might notice if you're looking at my hand and how I'm holding the pencil, it's actually changing. Sometimes I'm actually holding the pencil in between my middle finger and my pointer finger. This lets me angle the pencil more if I want to use the flat edge for a little bit of softer shading and if I don't want to get the point of it so much. This is a cool technique that I learnt from an art book that I've got. His name's John Howe. If you want to look him up, he's done a lot of concept work for Lord of the Rings. I think and he's a really amazing artist and I saw this was a technique that he was using and I tried it out for myself and I think it works really well in certain situations so it's worth trying out. It takes a little while to get used to but it's a really handy technique and it can be really good for some sketchy drawings as well when you just want to get the edge of the pencil and get some kind of broad strokes in there. So feel free to try it out for yourself and see how it goes. Hopefully you like it and then you can incorporate that into your future drawings as well. I decided to go back in and add a few highlights with my white gel pen. They don't really show up the best in this video, but you can kind of notice it in the drawing itself. It just gives it that little bit of extra detail and finishes off the drawing really well. Sometimes the gel pen doesn't really show up the best when the paper's already been worked on, so you just have to kind of work in a little bit more and sometimes just clean off the tip of the gel pen on a fresh bit of paper and then go back in and it shows up a little bit better. It's a bit of a subtle effect, but I definitely think it makes a difference and it helps certain areas pop a little bit better, like the highlights in the eyes, and then I've got some of the dots, but kind of around the eyes, which almost give it a shiny look, and I just think it works really well. 
in finishing the drawing off. Like I said before, I wanted this drawing to have a bit of a sketchy look. I wanted the hair to look like it was almost fading away and it almost looks like a reflection in water. That's kind of the look I wanted it to have. And the bottom right hand side of the face kind of fades into more of a sketchy look where you can see a little bit of the cross hatching and then it morphs into the writing. So that was just kind of the look I wanted to have, like the characters almost fading away. Severus Snape was definitely one of my favourite characters from Harry Potter. There's a certain sadness in his face, which I tried to capture in this drawing, so hopefully I did. So that's the end of this drawing video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. I'm sorry if it was rather sombre. Next week's video should be a bit more upbeat. So I'll catch you guys next week in next week's drawing video.